Hey guys, let's talk about some advanced techniques for deflickering your precious time-lapse sequences. Sometimes using the simple approach to deflicker that I showed in the basic tutorial and holy grail tutorial isn't enough. For example, if you have a sequence like this, where you have clouds that shade the ground, then you'll have the luminance curve going down because the whole image in average gets darker at this position. When the sun takes over again, then the luminance curve goes up again. If you apply a visual deflicker to this, you'd get a smoothing curve that would eliminate this peak that goes down here and would generate a compensation that goes up. What happens here is that you get an increased brightness on the sky at this position now because the deflicker increased the whole brightness of the image including the sky but the sky in nature has a constant brightness this means in fact this approach to deflicker would rather introduce flicker than removing it this means that we need another approach to deflicker for sequences like this where we have certain areas of the image that change brightness independently of the flicker effect. In this case, you would just draw a reference area to the sky in order to tell our time lapse that only this area should be used as a reference for the flicker. Let me remove the deflicker that we already applied in order to start over. With this button, you can remove your deflicker from the sequence. Let's go back to our starting situation. Again, we have our luminance curve calculated from the whole image. We have that drop in luminosity here because of the shading of the ground. What happens when I draw a reference area into the sky now is the following. We get a much smoother luminosity curve here that's being calculated only based on the brightness of the sky. Although we have clouds passing by here, the brightness of the sky in average is quite even across the sequence. So now we can apply our deflicker using this area as a reference and we'll get exactly the result that we want. The sky in average will get a smooth brightness progression while this part here will only be deflickered but not be altered in terms of global brightness change. Just for comparison, let's draw a reference area only to the ground. Those peaks that we didn't want to eliminate are still here, but as soon as I put my reference area to the sky, I get my smooth progression that I want to have. Everyone knows that a blue sky will always have the same brightness, so try not to introduce flicker to the blue sky by using the whole frame as reference, just use this reference area to define which areas should be constant and leave out the areas that have natural changes in brightness that you would like to preserve. There are a couple of tricks that you can do with those reference areas. One cool thing you might already have noticed if you worked with LR Timelapse 4, you can now change this reference area without having to save the sequence and therefore recreate the visual previews. This makes it much faster to just play with different reference areas just to check out which one would be the best. Another feature that might be useful in some situations is that you can animate the reference area. Basically, every time you set a reference area, this will get an anchor point here in your sequence. So this was just randomly frame 82 in this case. So if I go to another frame, for example, the first one and set another reference area, then I will get a query asking me if I would like to just draw another static reference area here that would be applied to the whole sequence or if I would like to animate this reference area. If I choose to animate it, you will see what happens when I scrub through this sequence, the, the reference area would just move. So I can do another anchor here, for example, at the, at the end. I mean, this does not make sense, but just to show you, then you will see 
how this reference area moves across the image. This can especially be useful if you shoot from a slider or with the pan tilt head and some thing intrudes into your sequence and you would like to move the reference area around it just to not have it inside the reference area. I hope I could help you to improve your deflickering skills with LR Time Lapse 5 a little bit. I'm sure you will obtain great results if you keep in mind that some sequences require you to set a reference area when deflickering. Please feel free to share your time lapse videos with us in the forum. Ask any questions you might have there. I'm reading there frequently and I'm trying to answer as fast as possible. I hope you enjoy LR Time Lapse 5. See you soon. Bye bye.